Big brain, top tier potential Fire Fist deck. There are a lot of Fire Fist cards I've never seen before. I played them back in the day. We're gonna use it with Tanky. We're gonna break it all down. Let's go. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. If you missed out on any of the other reviews, make sure you check out the other videos. We're gonna be doing combos, decklists, and deck type overviews. Let's go. It is 10 key time. 10 key is, was, unofficially on the forbidden Duel Links list of cards that we will never, ever, ever see in Duel Links. On that list includes cards like Gores, which we will never, ever, ever see but we're actually gonna see Tenki. It actually is coming. What is Konami thinking? Tenki doesn't even say Firefist in the card. What made you think that it's a Firefist card, huh? It says it nowhere. It searches for any level four or lower Beast Warrior. It does not care if it's a Firefist or not. Think of all your favorite Beast Warrior monsters to search. You are gonna search for Arvata, Kama, Yosinju, maybe the TG Warwolf, maybe an Urn Knight with the Koka Miru, or maybe you're gonna search for Crimson Fox. What? Fox was semi-limited because the zero attack reduce effect was too accessible, it was too easy to pull off. It also restricted you from using it with Neos Fusion, but now with Tanky, three Tanky, two Fox, that's like five Foxes, what the Fox were they thinking? Normally, I have a regular monster that's not from the extra deck against a Lunalite deck, knowing that they're not going to have a fox in their opening hand unless they're really going to luck sack me. Now at five foxes, they're going to sack me. But they also got hit by the ban list, maybe because of Tanky coming out. So there you go. Tanky, the play a non-Fire Fist deck way, but searching a Fire Fist with it is also a cool way that was used in the TCG. So you maybe don't have a favorite beast warrior type monster and you're thinking, okay, I don't care about Tanky. No, you still have to care about Tanky because you could play Tanky and just Fire Fist Bear in any deck. You could just toss in anything. You got a Dark Magician deck lying around, throw a Tanky and a Fire Fist Bear in it. Now, why would you want to do that? The Bear is a one card combo. The Tanky searches Bear. You summon Bear, Bear sends the Tanky to the graveyard, you just got to destroy any monster on the field. So one card combo, destroy any monster on the field. Also, if it deals battle damage, you get to then play another tanky from your deck face down on your field, ready to destroy another monster on the field. Or the true intended way to play tanky, I believe, is to play it in a full Fire Fist deck. Look at all of these Fire Fist monsters. But what about other decks? The biggest abuse in TCG that made a deck top tier because of Tanky, did not search a Fire Fist. Look at that, Gia made this, she's so proud of this. This is Helmet Bujins. Gia hated this deck, a lot of people hated this deck. The Tanky gave Bujins the whopping chance of opening up a Yamato turn one into a, about a 50% chance in Duel Links. It's an 80% chance. It's 79.3% chance. So will Bujin be top tier in Duel Links? Because in TCG, they always had Yamato at a 50% chance, or at least it felt like it in a 40 card deck. Now we're in a 20 card deck. Six Yamato, 20 card deck. You're crazy. It's Bujin talk time. Community ideas with the Bujin. You could do something like this, says Atlas or you could do something like that, or you could do something like this, or you could look at a deck I made a very long time ago on Bujins that I happen to have three open spots in for to just throw three tankies into that deck, and it's perfect, I would just play it with D-Draw. Here's my concept deck list, D-Draw Bujins. Yamato in the end phase? What do we wanna grab? If we grab a turtle, we can grab his Mikazuchi if we had a hair. We can grab Mikazuchi and discard the turtle so that we're double protected from a random alternative white dragon, which did get greatly uh, decreased. But otherwise, 
could just grab a crane. Wait, we already have a crane. You what, mate? And we'll grab, we could just grab a fox if we want to. What the fox? Or no, Mikazuchi's fine. So it's protected from double destruction. There we go. So back to our opponent. Let's draw. Let's give him a, an Ancients. Card of Consonants. Discard, draw two. Should have bade the D draw on the previous turn, but we had to get the hair in the graveyard. Uh, maybe it could have been good to just let our monster be destroyed. I could agree with that. Blue Eyes White Dragon. And if he wants to book a moon, the turtle negates. And then if he attacks, he becomes 3,600 by discarding a crane. Poggers. Then we will draw. Now, the Bujin Incarnation, what does it do? Let me read that real quick. If your opponent controls a monster, you do not. So we would just not do anything. We would not play into a treacherous. We would just attack. And then in the end phase, we could add a fox if we want to. Or we could just add a hare and then discard the hare. And then we basically beat Blue Eyes here. Blue Eyes is screwed. So let's do one more quick one. Tanky. Tanky grab Yamato. Yamato in the end phase. So we're now 1900. What do we want to draw then discard? I could very easily, I could draw a hair. I could draw a Yamato if I want to. To activate the fox, we do have to disc send a Bujin from the hands of the graveyard. So a Bujin we want in the graveyard will be a hair. So we could discard the fox or the hare, whichever one is fine. I think this is fine because we have the Buj Incarnation. So then we draw into a, an Ancients. All right, let's do our play. Card of Consonants, discard, draw two. Reveal blue eyes, summon the alternative white dragon. And we're going to be activating to destroy the Yamato. We're going to chain the hair. And if we want to make this play even more fair, we had a Sage which searched for the Ancients. Okay. We're going to Synchro. Vermilion. Pop. Now, I'm going to let you choose. Should the Vermilion attack into a D-draw? I don't think a Blue Eyes player would do that. I don't think they would attack in a D-draw. So just being a D-draw player, they wouldn't. But if you think they would, sure, I'd pick up my deck. You don't want me to pick up my deck. So we're going to pass. Draw. Now we have Buj Incarnation. This is what I really like. Buj Incarnation is a huge comeback card. Buj Incarnation, if your opponent controls a monster and you don't, you target a Bujin in the graveyard and a banished Bujin, you summon both of them. That is insane. So we'll summon the Yamato and we'll summon the Hare. And he is going to book a moon, the Yamato. Understandably, understandably. We're going to summon the Fox and we're going to overlay to make a Susan. Susan, once per turn, it's two level four Bujin monsters. You could detach a material to take a Bujin from your deck and add it to the hand or send it to the graveyard. So what we're going to do is we could detach the hair or the fox. The fox will protect us from all damage to our life points. We're at 4,000 life, so we'll detach. And we're going to grab a crane. Then the crane is going to attack in. And, well, we're going to discard the crane to boost this up to 4,800 damage. So he takes the hit. So he will be... So let's say he was at plus 2,700 life, then he loses 48. Okay, so he's at 1900, and we have a Buj Incarnation. Draw. Now, let's just say he somehow wipes out the entire field. The entire field is gone, it's dead, and he's got a Blue Eyes White Dragon, and we're at 3,000 life. I'm super cheating for Blue Eyes. I attack directly, but I negate. I use the, I use the Fox to discard a Fox, to negate the damage. Straight up negated. Then, it's my turn again. I have another Buj Incarnation, or I have a, if I have another Tanky or Yamato, Buj Incarnation to summon this back. And then I could summon the Yamato. 
I could normal summon this. I could exceed into the Susan. Susan, detach. Grab a monster. I could send a Krillin. Banish the Krillin. Destroy the Blue Eyes. Attack for game. And with the ability of Fox being able to stop damage to trick them into triggering a D draw, you do want to search Booj Incarnation. Booj Incarnation will be searched for with D draw. So Booj Incarnation and the Fox are protective and a really good follow up. So this is just some, you know, it's like playing with the toys of what Bujin can kind of do and what you could expect. That we could have doubled our attack to attack over Blue Eyes and all that good stuff. So I think that's pretty cool. I'm hopeful for Bujins. My general thoughts of Bujins, even though there's no new Bujin supports by besides the tanky is 79% chance to open up a Yamato. That's crazy. I'm hyped, but it seems that not many others are as hyped as me. Maybe I'm just hyped because of nostalgia of how fun this deck was back in the day. Time will tell. We'll see. I'm going to play this deck real early once the tanky comes out. I think Fox and Buj Incarnation plus D draw is broken. So when you have the 80% Yamato plus the Fox Buj Incarnation D draw combo, we're looking at a possible very, very good deck. And don't forget, Tanky, as we said earlier, it will boost up these other decks that I'm not really going to go into too much. Fire Kings, Yosinju, Luna Lights, Koka Miru. It's just going to be deck ideas to build. I was just extra passionate about Bujins to mention and play Bujins. This is it. The most hyped deck type of the new box, Fire Fist Review Time. This is a big brain deck. It's going to take a lot to learn this deck. This is top tier potential. We're getting tanky, as you already know. And all of these Fire Fist cards are the new Fire Fist cards we are getting for this deck. Here are some community concepts with the deck. You could build the deck with just level four monsters with the new Exceed. That's going to be the simple way, the small brain way, maybe the more fun way. Don't be ashamed to play the small brain way because it could be really good. Now, the big brain way, oh boy, the 3.5 axis concept. And we're going to be trying that out there. Here's some ideas in the discord. Oh, look at that rescue rabbit. That's another way to build it. You summon Vorse Raider, not Axe Raider, Vorse Raider to make your big exceed, your Fire Fist exceed. So Tanky, starting off, we'll search for any Fire Fist in this deck. Here's some older support and what they do. Bear destroys a monster. Gorilla destroys a backer. Tencent boosts up a monster by 1,000. Tensu allows a double summon. The Gyoku will lock up a back row. And the Wolf Bark will special summon a Fire Fist from the grave to exceed. Now on to the new stuff. Fire Fist Tiger King. Two level four Beast Warriors to make this. You could play it in any Beast Warrior deck. You want to play it in Luna Lights? Great. Now, why would you want to play it in a non-Fire Fist deck? Well, once per turn, detach a material. Non-targeting negate all other current face-up monsters until the end of the opponent's turn. There's a lot of great ways to use this against a Saber Dancer, a Spirit Dragon, all that good stuff. Otherwise, if you actually use it in a Fire Fist deck... On summon, you'll be able to set a fire formation card from your deck to face down the field, which will most likely be a Tenki or the Tensin, as we saw earlier. Now, Elephant is a new card that is nuts. This card is all about searching the ritual monster, which we'll talk about. On summon, you'll special summon a fire fist from the hand by sending a face up formation to the graveyard. Then that formation you send to the graveyard or another formation, you return it back in the deck to search for your ritual monster. El Land. Oh boy. Once per turn, negate a monster effect. It's at 2400 attack. You have to send a face up Fire Fist card or Fire Formation to the graveyard to negate a monster effect. It does not negate the activation. It cannot be activated in the damage step. It will also just be once per turn and it will not be able to destroy the monster you negate. Its second effect is you could discard a monster, any monster, to set a formation from your deck. You definitely want to use that in addition to being able to negate once per turn. Now we're going to talk about the ritual spell where there's a combo because, as you know from this, you negate a monster effect by sending a face-up fire formation on the fields of the graveyard while sending its own ritual spell, which is a continuous spell to the graveyard to summon it, has a great effect. The combo is going to be... 
If you negate a monster effect by sending the ritual spell to the graveyard, the ritual spell activates in the grave to summon a fire fist from your graveyard. So pretty much already told you what it does. That's what it do. You tribute from the hand or field to special summon your ritual from the hand. Then we have Ram. If Ram is summoned a normal summon, you'll search for a fire formation. If special summoned with a fire fist, not a fire formation card, it will again be able to search for a fire formation. Then we have the ultimate fire formation, Sinto. Negates a spell or trap. You must control a fire fist and a formation. Because this is searchable, this is a great card for negating. So if you want a quick little recap, the ritual monster will negate a monster effect. The Sinto will negate a spell or trap effect. Combo them together, you win. We have a rank four exceed, Cardinal. Target two fire fist formation type cards on your field or and or your graveyard. You're gonna return them back on the deck at the same time as you targeting two of your opponents face up cards on the field, not face down monsters or face down back row, face up cards on the field or cards in their graveyard. And then you return all four cards back into each other's decks. Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Lion Emperor. What does this card do? Well, its purpose is to recycle spirit. There you go. What does spirit do? Spirit, special summons a level three fire from the grave. And then you have rooster, send a form. Mation, fire formation from the field to the graveyard to set a new one from the deck. So you could tanky, search for this, summon it, send the tanky, play a tensu, then additional summon, cool combo. You also can add a fire fist if it is special summoned. So its regular ignition effect in the field is just to send a formation to play another. Its trigger effect on special summon is to search your deck for a fire fist monster. That's what the horse prince is gonna do. Level six synchro, special summons the rooster. Combo time, read this combo, it's a three card combo. This is what the combo was. Tanky, rooster, and a domi. The rooster could be the alpha instead. The tanky could have been a leopard. And we ended on a field with two negates. And we were untargetable by card effects. This was absolutely nuts. What the heck? Swallow? Why do we have a swallow? Okay. Is that it? Oh. Oh, we swallowed at the end. Here is a concept deck list with crystal power. And I'm just remembering, I forgot what our skill was. I don't, I didn't remember that it was crystal power. So in my gameplay, I don't even activate it. Use whatever skill you want, or maybe this is the skill to play. I think I just wanted the, the picture of Jesse out of my mind. I didn't even want to think that we have to play Jesse to play this deck. Hopefully we don't. Maybe there's a better skill. Enjoy the gameplay. Elephants. We need a monster to special summon, yeah? What is the ideal? We want a rooster with the elephant. Additional summon. Activate. Summon the rooster. Rooster activate. Grab leopard. Then activate, grab the ritual, send, can't use another tank key, set the Sinto. The leopard was wasted. Leopard was kind of trash. Now I could normal summon the leopard, which would have been a spirit. That would have been way better. The Leopard and the Discard effect is going to be the same thing. Grab a Tensin. All right, 
So that's pretty good right there. We could have had a better turn, but now our opponent goes. So they are going to Tensu. And I could negate it. If we read Tense Tenki, Tenki says you can only activate once per turn. So what should we wait to negate the Dami or negate a Tensu or negate a Tenki? We could just we're not worried about optimal play. Let's just see what happens. Negate. Now he's pissed. Gonna search for Grab a spirit. If you negate Tanky, you can activate another. If we negated Tanky here, it would have been worse. The Tensu is what he wanted. Summon, activate, to send, but then I negate. Negate by sending Dami. Activate the Dami. Activate, return the tanky back on the deck. Add. Still got plays. How does he still have plays? What the hell? What the hell? I can't even. How does he still have plays? Activate. And I guess he gets a Sinto himself. And that is it for Fire Fist. There is so much more to learn. The chat, the Discord, everyone is doing their best to figure out the best way to play it, the best way to build it. And we're still all learning. So when this deck comes out with the tournaments and playing myself, it will be further optimized. We're going to truly put this to the test. Is this top tier? We will find out on twitch.tv slash meta. Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays is my new stream schedule every single week, bro.